The final question in the part one is the question 15. It is to find inverses of relations. Here we have been told this is a triangle, M, P, M and P, and the vertices are given. You need to find the inverse. Now what exactly inverse is? X and Y, if you have coordinates, okay, uh, let's say 2 and 4. They swap it out. Inverse would be swapping them out. It will be 4, 2. Y becomes X, X becomes Y. So the inverted, the inverse relation over here would be 6 minus 8 minus 2 comma 6 and then we have minus 6 comma 4 that would be the answers isn't it very simple so all you need to do is from these points you need to swap them up 6 minus 8 minus 2 6 and minus 6 and 4 and plot them up that would be the inverse of this particular triangle all you have to do is swap the x and y and then plot it out yeah, you might just get the coordinates over here it's see the first part is 7 and 7 itself then 9 4 minus 7 and 3 you can see they just swap x becomes y y becomes x and that's the graph now imagine your options are four options with only this graph the reflected the inverse graph now then don't worry look at a point write the x and y coordinate x is 3 comma y is minus 7 so swap it up it'll be minus 7 comma 3 it should be minus 7 and 3 z becomes z prime or z dash so this is a this is how easily you can solve all these problems please do these by yourselves they are pretty straightforward over here and okay there's one thing let me show you over here what happens exactly is you know all these are reflected along the 45 degree line if you see carefully they're reflected over here at 45 degree line if you draw a straight line at 45 degrees that's x is equal to y. Now here at this point and this point are equal distance. This and this equal. Over here this and this all will be equal. So each point is reflected along the 45 degree line you can say. That's another way to understand. Now we have functions. How would we solve the functions? They are pretty simple as well. All you need to know is few rules. Whenever they give you a function x plus 2, write it as y is equal to x plus 2. Now here... You need to swap x and y. So this y becomes x is equal to and x becomes y plus 2. And now solve for this y. Take this to the other side. x minus 2 is equal to y. But this is not y. That is the y inverse or f inverse of x. This is the inverse function. That's it. Now we are looking at inverse. x plus becomes minus 2. That's it. So that would be the inverse, isn't it? Here, that is the inverse. And if you want to graph this, the first one was plus 2 over here. Next one inverse is minus 2. That's it. That's the inverse graph. Similarly, what happens over here? You can do it. It'll just be 1 by 5 because it's a single term. It's very simple. It'll be 1 by 5. That's the answer. And the original graph was 5x. That means very high. Can you see this? The slope is very high. Whereas the 1 by 5 is very slow, uh, very low slope. See, it's very small small slope now when there are two terms it's not possible to directly do it you can do it but it's better to solve it by the uh, simple method y is equal to minus 2x plus 1 take swap this x and y x is equal to minus 2y plus 1 and what you do is take this y to the other side will be 2y is equal to minus x plus 1 and now solve it divide both the sides by 2y is equal to minus x plus 1 by 2 or you can also write it as negative x by 2 plus half. That's the answer. So here you, you can see that's the answer. Negative x by 2 plus half. And you can graph them up as well. Now if the graphs are given, you know by the table, right? Mode 7, you can easily verify which is the graph. But generally they'll just ask for this equation. Over here as well, you can simply solve it up. All you need to do is y is equal to x minus 4 by 3. Now swap it up. It will become x is equal to y minus 4 by 3. First take 3 to the other side. It becomes 3x is equal to y minus 4. Take minus 4 to the other side. It becomes plus 4. And that's the answer. And this is how we can solve all these problems directly just by simple methods. Here also please do it by yourselves and check for the answers. Now, these linear functions have no problem at all. They are very straightforward. The graphs are simple, just a linear graph. 
even over here, whenever the degree is 1, they're all simple and straightforward. But what if the degree is 2? We have such problems here. Now there is a problem. Let's, uh, you know, solve this up. Phi y is equal to phi x squared. What happens? Swap x and y. It becomes x is equal to phi y squared now. Now take this to the other side. It'll be x by phi is equal to y squared. I'll write y over here. And what do I do? I take square root on both the sides. So this is y plus or minus square root x by phi. So this is the answer. Now, what happens is it's a square root function and your plus and minus. Um, now, if you see this originally, it was parabola, something like this, right? Phi means it'll be a little thinner. It's something like this. Now, square root function, this inverse, I've told you it will be along the 45 degree line. X is equal to Y. So, it must be something like this and there is minus also. It'll be like this. Now, these are two separate graphs. This is one graph, one graph. If you see that, plus square root x by 5, you can graph it in Desmos or other GeoGebra, other graphing calculators online, and you will see for plus only so much will be there. If you do minus square root x by 5, you will have the remaining part, the down below part. Now here, you must understand one thing. There is a relation over here. Anything that is in this line, right, will be coming over here, this line. So what is the domain of this line? It's from minus infinity to zero, right? Whenever you restrict the domain from minus infinity to zero, you will get this part of the graph. So that's minus over here, sorry. Minus infinity comma zero. That's it. But if it is from positive infinity to zero to positive infinity, that is all the x values, the domain over here is from zero to infinity, that will be a small bracket. Then what happens is you will have the... Okay, I, I did wrong. Sorry. Let me just clear this part. Okay, let me make this clear. Whenever you are in the left side, what is the limit? It is minus infinity to zero. Whenever you have infinity, it will be a small bracket. Zero will be a big bracket. That will be the negative part down. Whereas from 0 to infinity is this part and it's over here. So that is the positive part. Why? Because this, you can see they are in, they are the inverse, right? So this part. Here it is 0 to 0 is close bracket and open bracket will be infinity. So that will be the answer. That is the restriction. You can see here the final answer. That is the rough graph. Um, but over here they have written it. Now what they have done over here is... They have removed the square root. Okay, this is just simplification. No problem. I'll just show you how that is done. So you have what? Square root x by phi, isn't it? You just multiply and divide both the sides by phi and phi. That is fine. Nothing is wrong. You know, this is one only. So you get phi x by 25. And now you split the square root. So it'll be phi x divided by 25 over here. Okay, that's what they have done. That's simplification. Yeah, this is also correct. Not at all wrong. If this is not there, sorry, over here, when you remove the square root, it becomes phi, okay? So if at all you can't see this option, this will be the option. That's it. So now then, here you can see, what is there? It is f inverse of x for negative part. What is the domain restriction? Here you can see restricted at minus infinity, comma, zero. Whereas the other positive part, it's from zero to infinity. That's it. That'll be the graph. Now we'll do one more problem on this. Now here, y is equal to x squared plus 4. Swap the x and y's. It'll be x is equal to y squared plus 4. Take 4 to the other side. x minus 4 equals y squared. Take square root. y will become equal to plus or minus x minus 4. Isn't it? Now what happens is if you're graphing it, let's just look at the graph and then I'll explain. It's very simple. The positive will be from 0 to infinity. Negative will be from minus infinity to 0. But over here, the graph is like this, isn't it? Now, this part corresponds to this part, this to this, right? This is along x is equal to y. So that's the thing, that this is the distance. So here, all from minus infinity to 0 will be negative. Where is minus? See, this one is negative infinity to 0. Whereas the positive part, you can see, will be from here 0 to infinity.
That's how we solve these. We have a real world problem about weight. The formula to convert weight to weight in pounds to stones is P of X, X by 14, where X is the weight in pounds. Find the inverse and describe its meaning. Now, when you find inverse, now what is being found out? Pounds to stones, right? It'll be stones to pounds, just inversing, right? So this goes inside and what you're solving will be the other thing. Now, let's write this. Y is equal to X by 14. So swap it. X is equal to Y by 14. So 14 goes to the other side. 14 X is equal to F inverse of X. Now, here you can see pounds are found out. Pounds to stone. X is, oh sorry, X is weight in pounds, sorry. X is weight in pounds. So pounds divided by 14 would be the stones, right? Now, when you multiply stones, that is X is now stones because F inverse is conversion of other way around. When you multiply 14 to stones, you get pounds. It's just the inverse. So you can see the first part. That is the answer. And what was the next part? Now, the part B is to graph P of X and P inverse of X and then to find the weight of a dog, dog that is 2.5 stones. Now we know the conversion of stones to pounds is 14 into x. So just multiply it by 2.5, you'll get the answer. But let's do it by graph. Let's see the graphs here. So this is the graph. And now where is 2.5 stones? Somewhere over here, right? You need to draw a straight line and it'll be somewhere over here. Okay, it might be 35 plus or 40 something. But you can just multiply and check the answer over here. It is 35 pounds, 2.5 corresponding. If it's very straight, you will get the exact answer. So that's how we solve this. Again, another straightforward problem, but you might only get the conversion, not graphing and stuff. And this is the last problem. And this is a crazy long problem. Let's see how it is done. DeAndre is designing a code to send secret messages. He assigns, he assigns each letter of the alphabet to a number where A is equal to 1, B is equal to 2, C is equal to 3, and so on. And then he uses C of X is equal to 4X minus 9 to create this secret code. Write the inverse of this function and describe the meaning. Let's do the first part and describe uh, find the inverse now. So we have Y is equal to 4X minus 9. So X is equal to 4Y minus 9. So uh, rearrange and find for only y, it will be x plus 9 is equal to 4y, y is equal to x plus 9 divided by 4. So this is the inverse function, inverse of inverse of x. So this is how you can encrypt, the, decode the code, basically, you can find the meaning of the code. The inverse can be used to convert the secret code to the original message. Now here, make tables of C of X and C inverse of X and use the table to decide for the message. Now this is never gonna come for the exam. What you need to basically do is write out all the, you know, the code over here for these alphabets, write the code. Now if C of X is one, if you put one, like if it is letter A, what is the value you get? Now you put it in this uh, given equation and you'll get C over here instead of four X, you put one minus nine, you get minus five as the value. Now for B, if it's a, a letter B, X is two, right? Substitute, you'll get these values. So you have to do for all the letters. And once you get all the letters, see, whatever A value is one, in terms of a secret code, that is minus five, the value is minus five. If it is say F, it is 15 and so on. Now, in order to decipher it, we need to use the inverse function. So what are the values which we, uh, which we were asked to find out if you go back to the question, we have to find out these, right? So here, put those values. Like say X is, is equal to 15 for the inverse. What happens? Put it over here and solve what is the value X is 6, right? What is the value of 6? 6 is F, A, B, C, D, E, F. So over here, F. Now this is what we need to do for all those digits. Over here, they have done it for literally all the digits over here. You don't need to do for all inverses, only the code, whichever they have asked. They have done it for all and found it out. So A, B, C, D, all these are the deciphering words. So they had asked us how many? 15, 75, 47. So what is 15? It's F we had seen at that time. What about 75 or search where is 75? It is U. And 47, over here, you have to just search. 15 and so on. So the message was basically functions.
So that was the secret code. Just for a word, it will take you so much long. So imagine if it's going to send a sentence, that's going to take him days, you know. And that is the end of part one. Finally, we have finished all the questions. I wish you all the very best for your exams. Please do study well. Don't keep it at the last minute. Try to revise as early as possible. If you have any doubts, please do post them in the comments and I'll try to get back to you very soon. You can find all the explanation videos of part one questions and part two questions in my channel. I just want to thank each and every one of you for supporting my channel, for subscribing to my channel, for sharing my videos with your friends. I really appreciate it so much. I'm so grateful to all of you guys for all the support, for all the love. I just want to wish you all the very best. I hope everyone gets great marks in their exams. I wish you good luck and take care.